I woke up knowing what it was. It was Corey LeBerry's birthday. He was overly excited uh, to celebrate his birthday. Um, he had this like huge stream set up for, for it. It was a huge celebration um, that he made a big deal about like a week prior. So I called him the day of and, and I gave him his birthday wishes and, and told him I was gonna see him um, after a stream. I think it was like 4 or 5 p.m. by the time I actually um, came over. Um, there was really nobody there, just like the roommates and you know, a couple other people um, just hanging out. I went to the backyard and Corey was just in the pool uh, with a white claw in hand on the phone with someone. And I asked him, I was like, oh, <laughs> how's it going, birthday guy? And um, he was just like, look at me, I'm living life. <laughs> and, and it made me laugh because, you know, that was essentially like the idea of that day of the day um, to for him to just enjoy himself throughout the day all, all we really did was just enjoy the company of a of, of, of very small group of people I think it was a maximum of like 13 people um, no one was really drinking everybody maybe had had like a, uh, a seltzer everybody was just kind of like just hanging out um, Corey obviously was drinking a little bit more than everybody else but that was fine because he was in the comfort of his own home and you know he had people you know taking care of him making sure he, he did he wanted if whatever he wanted kind of like just like catering to him uh, after a couple hours of being there i think it was around like six seven like it was like seven we were like all right bet like let's get you some food because he was like yeah i'm hungry whatever um so he jumped on an order um on a postmates order and the food came, but he didn't realize that the food came. Somebody ended up eating his food, made a big, huge deal about somebody eating his food. So me, uh, another friend, and my girlfriend at the time all just said, you know, we'll, we'll just go get you some, uh, some wings or some, uh, some other food. We'll be right back. Um, obviously, like having the Postmates or whatever the hell, it was just going to take a little bit longer. So we were just like, fuck it. Like, we are sober, you know what I'm saying? We, we can go and get him some food and bring it back to the house. So we went to Wingstop, got the food. It was like 7.45. Um, by the time we, we got back, only to find Corey tattooing his name on his leg upside down. When I walked in, I said, what in the hell are you doing? Uh... And, and when I looked down, like, he was at a C-O-R. And I was like, well, like, <laughs> what are you going to do? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're already halfway there. You might as well finish the, the damn thing. And, yeah, I mean, he, he was, he was, <laughs> he was just tattooing himself by the time we got there. So we just let him do his thing, got him the food you know, continue on doing what we were doing, just hanging out. Um, I think a couple of minutes later, Daniel Silva, the tattoo artist, uh, came by because he want, he was going to tattoo um, Corey for his birthday. Corey looked up to him. I didn't personally know him that well. I didn't know him at all. I had maybe two encounters with him. Um, Corey really looked up to him. Daniel Silva had tattooed him, um, like, a, little, a couple months prior to to that day and he was just like yeah I'm gonna give you a tattoo for your birthday so he pulled up in a McLaren uh, 750S or 720S it's, it's a McLaren sports car um, and he had essentially been drinking when Daniel came to the house it rose some sort of awareness um, for me because I again I, I didn't know what the relationship was between him and Corey like that um, and it was just pretty apparent that the close friends didn't know either 
But at the end of the day, Corey made everyone feel like they were his best friend, like anybody. They were like roughhousing and wrestling. Um, and after, you know, a, a, a few minutes, I was just like, yo, yo, like, chill out. Um, and, and that was like the end of the rough, rough housing because I was just like, this is kind of weird, you know? Corey has been drinking um, heavily and, you know, like there's no need for all, for all this. So we ended up going into the living room and, and sat, um, hanging out, whatever. Um, I guess Daniel was setting up to, to tattoo. Um, Corey, and then he came into the living room and was like, yo, yeah, I got this, uh, he was just kind of like talking about his car, how fast it was and, you know, uh, not being able to control it because it was so fast and, and this, that, and the fourth. Um, he um, started to ask people if they wanted a ride in the car, like if he could take anybody in, like anybody could go. and. Um, Everybody was just kind of like, no, it was really standoffish uh, uh, on the topic. And we just let it, left it at that. And he kept asking, he's like, yo, I can take, I can take two at a time. Like we can go, we can go. And uh, after, you know, five minutes of, of being asked, we were just like, yo, like not, nah, like we're not, no one's going, to, no one's leaving the house at all. Like, no, like, no. So I got up, went to the kitchen. When I was in the kitchen, um, a friend came and was like, yo, Corey and Daniel just le like left. And I was like, what the fuck? So I ran out behind him with two of the people and we were out there. And by the time we got out there, they were already in the car. Um, the passenger door was locked and the window was up. So I went around to the, the driver's door and I was like, yo, don't drive. Um, I was like, You're, you've been drinking, you shouldn't be driving. Corey, get out of the car. Um, Daniel, get the fuck out of the car. I was angrily asking Daniel to get out of the car and not drive. Um, and at the same instance of me finishing that sentence, uh, like he turned on the engine and just floored it down the street on, on the same street that we were on. Uh, did like a U-turn and we were still on the street and floored it back down. It was me and two other people still in the middle of the street, kind of like dumbfounded. Um, and when he was coming back down the street, it was five, six feet away from almost hitting one of us, which to me, I was just like, what a, what a idiot. Um, so they, they came back down, uh, tried to stop at the stop sign, but kind of like went uh, past the stop sign and stopped in the middle of the street. All while, um, Daniel CV was kind of pulling up into like pulling up to the house. He did like a like when he was at the middle of the street, he kind of stopped for a second and then went up like north uh, from where we were. We were still outside, like we were outside still. Uh, on the corner and like everybody was kind of like trickling out from the house. It was maybe a minute two minutes um, from the point where they turned and went straight, uh, where someone said they just crashed. And I like, I could still hear cars because it was like the house was close to a main road where you could hear a lot of cars, a lot of noises and stuff like that. So the person was like, yeah, they just, they just crashed. And I was like, no, like there's, there's no possible way. I still hear, like the, I hear the car. Like it was the same similar sound of the car that had just left. And I was, I was really under the impression in that same, like this is all like 
happening very fuck very fast. In a matter of a second, they were like, yeah, he just got in the crash. And I heard the urgency in the person's voice. So uh, my girlfriend at the time uh, was already outside and I just told her to jump in the car. So me, two others jumped in the car and, and, and we were essentially the, the first people to see the car. There was four, four stop signs from the house. And at the second, like, at the second stop sign, sorry, at the third stop sign on the way to where the car was, I saw the car. Um, I just saw the car. And it wasn't in, in good condition at all. When we got there, I jumped out. Like I, the car was still moving. Like, like she was driving. I was in the passenger seat. I jumped out. The car was still moving. Uh, I, 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 there was already neighbors outside trying to help. Um, when we got there, Daniel Silva was. Distraught. I don't. I don't know how to describe him, but he was arguing with the neighbor about trying to get out of the car, um, while other neighbors were trying to open the passenger door. Everybody that was at the house pulled up to where we were. Um, I went around the car to try to help open the car and we couldn't because it was stuck. Um, in that same instance, Daniel had gotten out of the car and I heard someone say he is running away. I looked up and he was like jogging, trotting, I don't know what the word was or what the word is to explain he wasn't anywhere near the car when I looked up and I ran after him um, after hearing, after just listening and hearing and seeing and I ran after him and I caught up to him, pushed him into a fence, and before I could do anything, Christian CV came up and bear hugged me and said, go help Corey. So I ran back. Just to look at everything that was going on. So while Daniel CV and the neighbors were trying to open the passenger door still, I ran up to it and I started ripping the door apart. We opened the passenger door. The, the seatbelt was stuck. We tried to get the seatbelt off and, 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 and get Corey out. 
onto the the side. For a really long time, I held a lot of resentment towards Daniel Silva. I was angry. I couldn't really understand why it was a very, very stupid, careless accident. And although I feel this way, I try to make sense of it and, and This is the first time With the approval of Corey's family, I'm making this video in hopes that there is a lesson learned here. If you're going to drink, drink responsibly. Don't get behind the wheel of a car if you've been intoxicated or impaired in any, in any sort of way. It's been two and a half years since the accident. And I am still trying to process things. I urge everyone to be smart when they're drinking or partying or celebrating life is too short and taken for granted a handful of times